Good morning, Threshold Crew. Good morning, Lobster Crew. Lovely bit of gear. This is called Lost Summer by Akura Tide, I guess. Akura Tide? Could be. Hope so. Yes indeed, that's called Lost Summer, it's by Akura Tide, off their album Past Lives. Mmm, it's on Blue Martens label, Whew. can't argue with that to clear away the cobwebs in the morning. Lovely bit of gear, lovely bit of gear. Ah! Lobsters, lobsters, lobsters. Yeah, right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is four minutes past ten on uh, December the 19th, 2018, the Chinese year of the chin swinger. Hooey! Damn, there's only, uh, this is the uh, third, second to last, third, third, to, third to last show of the year. Damn, we're 63 shows in now. How has this even happened? How have I been allowed to do this? Why is no one stopping me? I don't understand. Um, yep, I've not been uh, I've not been protested against. Uh, I've not been deplatformed. In fact, everyone's just been thoroughly nice. What what yeah? What a lovely bunch of lobsters you all are. What a lovely bunch of creatures all across this crazy flat earth of ours, all the way from here to the fictional land of Narnia that some call Australia. Well, howdy doody, bouncing clown. Ladies and gentlemen, whew, it's coffee and memes. Steady job, a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny and it's, it's, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you. And if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Mm. 
Welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm on YouTube, just going out through the airways, out into the stratosphere, off past the moon, wherever that may be. If anyone's been there, probably not. I think they faked it all, didn't they? They faked this whole universe malarkey. They faked the sun. That's just a big fucking hydroponics in the sky, isn't it? It's all fake. I, this is basically, I'm starting to believe that this whole life, this whole reality routine is just a bloody Truman show. And everyone out there are robots. Uh, they're all they're either they're either some sort of some sort of sex robot or they're just some sort of I don't know kind of worker bee drone. And I'm starting to think that maybe I'm the only real one. Just me and Wesley Snips. We're just out here together, you know, just trying to just trying to make something of our lives. But uh, you know, it's it's tough out there for a lobster. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm suffering from some sort of paranoid delusion. I don't know. But until I find out. I'm just going to continue dropping these absolute shoe throwers and just talking talking the Turk, quite honestly, because you know what? It's keeping me happy for the time being. Apparently other people seem to be all right with it as well. So until they tear this laptop and this lobster out of my cold, dead hands, I'll be right here with my coffee and my memes. Where am I? Bloody coffee. Right, anyway. Hey, let's get into the news. If spiders work together, they could eat all humans in a year. Right, uh, Tom Wood from the Lab Bible reports, 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 reports. Oh, you didn't see last night? I was, uh, um, I was at the Lab Bible offices. Well, I was next to the Lab Bible offices. I went to a um, two-hour course in digital marketing, uh, which was free. And uh, it was a little bit like one of those ones where they sort of try and they get you in on a free thing and then they sort of try and sell you timeshare. They sort of try and sell you onto a like three grand course. It's like, yeah. Um, but it was in the Lab Bible offices, which by all gate east, and um, pfft, could, they wouldn't let me on their Wi-Fi. I don't know why. Anyway, if, if spiders worked together, they could all that he could eat all humans in a year. Um, so currently, spiders are more concerned with munching their way through the world's population of insects, as well as eating a few things like lizards, tiny mammals, and birds. Uh, however, new research found that the total weight of what they eat in a year would massively outstrip the combined weight of every single human being on the planet Earth. Not me, I'm too big. Um, isn't that a nice thought? Uh, this chilling and frankly quite disgusting discovery was made through the scientific rigour of Martin Niffler from the University of Basel in Switzerland and Klaus Birkhofer from Lund University, Sweden, and the Brandenburg University of Technology in Cottbus, Germany. Hopefully that last sentence was more fun for you to read than it was for me to write. Well, uh, Tom Wood, I'm going, I've only got your word to go on that any of that is factually accurate. Uh, but we will continue on in the name of, um, you know, good humour and uh, just a, frankly a good faith radio show. Niffler and Birkhofer published their findings in the journal The Science of Nature. And the numbers... Uh, uh, that have been brought up are pretty amazing, even if they are quite gross. Uh, they figure that spiders consume a gigantic 400 to 800 million tonnes of prey each calendar year. To put that in context, uh, that's at the very least as much meat as is consumed by all humans on the planet. Not me, I'm too big. Uh, we get through at least 400 million tonnes a year. Decent. Uh, to give that further context, uh, that is more meat than can be provided by all humans on the planet. The total weight of the whole adult human population is around uh, 287 million. All right, well, what if we eat the kids as well? You know, f uh, like 50% of the population is under 30. So, I don't know, let's say that, I don't know, 30% are under 18. You've, you've knocked out 30% of the numbers to make yourself look hard and cool. Niffler and fucking Bert... Bert Berkhofer, your pair of sods. Anyway, after all, what's a few million tons of mass between friends? Okay, look, fine. Uh, add that to the extra 70 million tons or so uh, that all the kids... Oh, right, okay, fair enough. I should read these things first. The 70 million tons of kids that the world provides, um, still short of what the spider's going to... Basically, kind of what they're getting at with this is that spiders... If spiders got their shit together, if spiders actually got their shit together for once in their miserable little arachnid bloody lives, they might actually be able to do something with their lives. Like, they might actually, you know, they might actually be able to clean their rooms, take some responsibility and get their act together. Get your act together. Whoa. D doubled up on that one. Get your act together. Okay. Um, they, uh, yeah, if they just weren't so busy just lounging around in webs, just bloody making these webs, basically it's a spider hammock, 
lounging about, probably stoned, watching reruns of That 70s Show or Everyone Loves Raymond, something like that. If they actually got their shit together, they could eat everyone. Don't tell them that, though. Then they might do it. Then we've got a bloody spider war on our hands. And that's the, oh, frankly, that's the last thing I need. I'm trying to get this new studio sorted and get this radio station off the ground. The last thing I need is a fucking war with the arachnids. Jesus, that'd be a pain in the ass. I mean, at least it would give people something to focus on, isn't it? You know, you, people would be less worried about whether or not radio stations could play Baby It's Cold Outside if they've got a giant fucking spider at their door trying to eat their kids. Maybe we need this spider war. Maybe that'll really shake things up a little bit. Um, it's funny, those stories, like the cold outside one and the Santa being gender neutral, that like once you probe past the headline, there's just nothing of any substance beneath it. Anyway, I digress. These fucking spiders, right? Coming over here with their webs, you know, ensnaring us in their webs. Yeah, these foreign spiders. <laughs> um, uh... Still want to put a pint glass over them and take them outside? Thought, what are you on about? Hold on a second. To put that in easily understandable terms, spiders could munch down the whole sorry lot of us and still have room for dessert. That's if they could be bothered. Exactly! They can't be asked, can they? Lazy spiders. Scum. They're, they're scum. They're arachnid scum. Anyway, look. Hey, look. Um, let's play... Hey, look. Got this. New mob tactics. <laughs> So, after not replying to me on Twitter for God knows how long, suddenly, old mob tactics pop up on Instagram, giving it the big un. I was like, look, are you going to come on the show? Are you going to come down the park with me? And they've confirmed that, yes, next year they will not only come on the show, but they will also go to the park and go on the swings with me. So that's good news. Big put, big, big put, big foot by Mob Tactics. Choice bit of gear. Shout out Offrey Moore, he's on a roll through in Leipzig. Good boy. I am. 
I am the drum and bass farmer in the chat saying double drop this with the Shimon tune Yeti from a few days ago. Makes sense, doesn't it? It does make sense. We need a Sam Squamps tune as well, then. Oh, that one's finished then. Mob Tactics with Big Foot. It's on Ram. It's on the Ram 2000. <laughs> Ram 2019 annual. It's a nice tune. That I'll give. I'll give that one to him. It's fine. Run it through all the, um, you know, all the bits. To check. Make sure everything's okay. And it's absolutely fine. Um, right. What else have we got? Cat climbs into box and accidentally gets posted 700 miles away. Cats are idiots. When they're not stealing drugs, they're just doing stupid things like this. Next time your cat hops into an old box, be very careful. That could end up being sent halfway round the world. Oh, halfway across the country. Okay. Um, they could get stuck there and posted 700 miles across Canada. Not if you don't live in Canada. Jen Mills of the Metro. Um, Baloo, a tabby cat from Nova Scotia, uh, found that out. That he found out that even curiosity doesn't kill the cat. Uh, it could take you on an unintentional adventure. Well, this is the sort of start of a uh, light-hearted sort of Disney film, isn't it? Cat is a bit stuck up its own ass, you know, it's kind of moody, sort of a bit belligerent cat. You know what cats are like, you know, bloody snooty little pricks. They steal drugs. Uh, they get high off of the drugs, obviously, and then they're just rolling around. And uh, then snooty cat gets into a box or something, because that's the natural home of the cat, and uh, accidentally gets posted 700 miles away. Then he's got to find his way home. And, you know, he has to go on a whole journey and he explores a lot more about himself, sees a bit more of the world and, you know, eventually becomes a little bit less stuck up its own arse, a little bit less snooty and eventually makes his way back to his owner. And, you know, everyone else there is happy and, you know, everyone's better for it. Everyone's better for the journey. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I think this Baloo, the tabby cat from Nova Scotia, wants to think about selling the film rights to this. Just a thought, mate. Just trying to make a pound note, isn't it? Owner Jacqueline Lake told CTV, We knocked door to door, we searched the woods, we searched under decks in garages, under steps, and he was gone. The stowaway uh, was discovered uh, when he went to the toilet, and the driver, taking the parcel, wondered why there was urine in the truck. 17 hours into the journey, which began on December the 6th, he found the cat tucked inside the box and contacted the local animal shelter. Perhaps the cat just identified with the... Oh, the Perolator, Perolator Freight Company. To Oh, Jesus, man. Anyway, he's back home now. Oh, everyone's better. Everyone's better for the experience. Um, smoking skunk could make men infertile. New study warns. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. Yeah. Um, smoking super strength skunk. Jesus, who wrote this? Someone's nan. Oh, this is written by Metro Reporter. And there's just a sort of outline of a head on the, um, as the picture. This is um, either some Metro Reporter that is, uh, frankly, shook and too scared to give their name, or it's someone who's recently been fired. Uh, smoking super strength skunk could make you infertile or stunt your unborn baby, a new study has warned. The research found that the chemical uh, that gets you high also alters the sperm's genetic profile. I'm just sort of imagining stoned sperm swimming around in a circle now. Um, if that's true, well. Uh, specifically, uh, the principal psychoactive chemical... Uh, t oh, someone's going to... THC disrupts genes involved in the growth of organs and body of the unborn child. Yeah, don't be honking on the ganja while you're pregnant. That's Presumably, you, you would think that that was a given. Scientists uh, do not know if the changes in changes to sperm could make for... Why have you just reported that it... Oh, could. Right, okay. Scientists do not know if the changes to sperm could make men infertile. Um... Hold on, that's not a real sentence. Scientists do not know if the changes to sperm could could be making men infertile, can be reversed, or, right, um, whether or not it can be reversed. Basically. Can they reverse it? They don't know. Basically, it's another one I said, they don't actually really know. They're just like, well, yeah, could do. Could, could. So do you have the evidence for it making, making them infertile? Well, I mean, it could. It's plausible, isn't it? Think about it. Well, yeah, I guess. Could do. Well, could do. Um, experiments in rats and a study with 24 men found THC appears to target genes in two major cellular pathways and alter DNA um, 
methylation, a process essential to normal development. One of the pathways is involved in helping bodily organs reach their full size. The other involves a large number of genes that regulate growth during development. Both pathways can become dysregulated uh, in some cancers. Oh dear. Um, Associate Professor uh, Susan Murphy, uh, Chief of the Division of Reproductive Science, said, In terms of what it means for the developing child, we just don't know. Uh, She explained it was not known whether sperm affected by THC could be healthy enough to even fertilize an egg and and continue its development into embryo. Uh, It's not known, basically. It's more just don't know. Why not? Just like, why, why not just do news stories asking anyone about anything? Like, oh, hey, Joe Bloggs, um, are there aliens? Could be. Okay, cool, we got our new headline. Joe Bloggs says aliens could be out there. Um, do you think Donald Trump could be a shape-shifting vampire from the future? I guess he could be. Donald Trump could be shape-shifting vampire from the future. <sighs> right, look, here's a track called Foghorn um, by Insomniacs. <laughs> Foghorn hot in DMB right now. Yes. Foghorns in general. That would be splendid. Oh, we're doing a flashlight thing, are we? Floodlight? I just love the smell of the fresh sea air. Isn't it glorious? Maybe we could get an ice cream. Yeah, floodlight by fresh. What's going on here? This is an outrage. What's that sound in the distance? It sounds like... I don't want to be a knob or anything, but you know what I think the intro of that sounds a little bit like Floodlight by Fresh. Hey. Can you hear that? Oh yeah, like fully. Sounds like music. There's a party going down. I don't want to be the guy to miss it. Let's check it out. I guess we're playing Floodlight now. I can see a building. Do you see it up ahead?
feels like we've been walking forever. What kind of music is that? Well, they seem to be having a good time. Yeah, bully. I'm having a good time too. Ha 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 ha. I'm feeling kind of grimy. Do you want to take some ecstasy with me? Totally. It's time to party together. Well, listen, yeah, it's 2018. Everything's just a remix of a remix of a remix. Yeah, that's uh, Floodlight by Fresh, and before that was Foghorn by Insomniacs. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, right, look, back into the important stuff. Man keeps diary during four-day bender at 4,600 quid tourist sex island. Hoo-wee! Uh, let me tell you about a place. It's a place that you, a normal person, could visit should you desire. In this place, you can have all the sex and drugs you want. The rock and roll you have to provide for yourself, uh, but you can do it for just a simple flat fee. A bit like Love Island, but not suitable for the telly. Uh, that, if that sort of thing interests you, uh, you can pay up to 4,600 quid and get uh, stuck in. Um, if you'll excuse the crass turn of phrase. Uh, you can get stuck into orgies and drugs with various partners and of uh, varieties for the whole weekend. There's a catch, of course. You have to go to the sex island in Venezuela. Oh, this will be that uh, Venezuelan socialist utopia that we hear so much about. Oh, no. Everyone's dar- starving to death. Uh, uh, this is ridiculous. I can't believe that this is even a thing. Uh, at the most recent event run on the island, Ryan, a dentist from New York, travelling along for the second time, uh, and told the, mirror, uh, told the Daily Mirror about his experience on the South American sex tourism re- resort. The island itself is Margarita Island, and it has a hotel, a nightclub, and a private beach. Ryan left Trinidad and Tobago's capital port of Spain on a yacht and headed for the Venezuelan island. Upon arrival, and because he's now a veteran of these events, he went straight to the two best-looking women and asked if he could stick with them for the whole trip. Right. The first night sees a lesbian sex show taking place in the nightclub. Nice quiet one to start with. Ryan told the mirror, this guy called Samuel, oh sorry, how yeah, this guy called Samuel, the macho man in the group, got up and started having sex with the girls in that lake. Slowly, almost everyone, including me, started having sex in the club. It was like a huge orgy in that lake. Do you know, like orgies and that. It was a bit like that. Wow. Uh, it isn't just sex and drugs, uh, though that is almost ex- though it is almost exclusively that. You can also play golf. There is, of course, a twist. The winner of an orgy golf tournament wins all 100 girls for 15 minutes. Christ, I don't know what I'd do with one girl for 15 minutes, let alone 100. Uh, of course, not all the activities are for everyone. Uh, Ryan found himself bored by the topless salsa lessons, for example. He said, uh, <laughs> instead, he said that he simply went for, you guessed it, another orgy. Wow, Ryan, he loves an orgy, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, you know that, Ryan, him and his orgies. He just can't get enough of them. He said, we took some pictures to remember it, and I'll have to hide them from my wife. What? Oh, for God's sake, Ryan sounds like a stand-up guy, doesn't he? Fuck's sake, Ryan's d- doing a bloody 
Look, if you're married, yeah, and you're going on a secret sex tourism holiday, you don't write a diary for the Daily Mirror about it. You're an idiot, Ryan. You're not only an arsehole cheating on your wife, you're an idiot. Get your act together. According to Ryan's report, many of the people who attend such events are from the USA and Canada, but there are also people from Europe and Asia who attend. Uh, Such is the toll of the weekend on the island, people were passing out from the sheer intensity of it all. After a quick game of strip tennis, yep, that's the thing, it's back to the nightclub for more drugs, sex and debauchery. Then, no sooner as it has all begun, you're off, back home to your miserable lives. Uh, Well, thanks Tom Wood of of Lab Bible for that, That's, uh, that's a very informative story about a rather peculiar sounding place. Um... That seems uh, that seems the sort of polar opposite of uh, the rest of Venezuela. Uh, now on to uh, a story about the same island. A sixteen-year-old boy loses his virginity after winning a ticket to the sex island. Wow! If that's not every young boy's dream, I don't really know what is. I mean, God, at sixteen, someone's like, um, "Do you want to enter this um, prize draw to see if you win a ticket to a sex island?" What do you mean, a sex island? Yeah, basically, it's an island, yeah, and it's just full of lasses, and you just have orgies and stuff. And that's a real place, is it? Yep. Okay. Oh, I've won. <laughs> Can you imagine? Remember we told you yesterday yesterday about the sex island? Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, here's another half, heartwarming tale from that remote and massively bizarre island getaway. Uh, This time, the Daily Mail brings us the stirring tale of a 16-year-old virgin. God, poor, he's managed to make it to 16 and still be a virgin. That is rough. 16-year-old virgin from New York who managed to win two tickets to the raunchy party and spend a wild weekend there. Needless to say, he returned a virgin no more. Wow. A young man, identified only as Brian, says that he travelled along to the island, um, uh, though not confirmed to be, Margarita Island near Venezuela for a four-day long sex, drugs, bring-your-own-rock-and-roll party. Uh, It was a weekend of firsts for the young sex tourist. He drank alcohol for the first time. He had sex for the first time. He took drugs, you guessed it, for the first time. Despite living in New York, Brian is originally from Chile, and he won passage on a luxury yacht from the Caribbean to the unknown location after entering a competition using his dad's credit card. This little kid is a gangster. Oh, my days. Um, his dad knew nothing of it, but, <laughs> but he was still allowed to go on the trip, strangely enough. Um, it's not known whether or not the permission came from his dad or the organisers of the event. I'm just guessing here, but you'd have to imagine that his father didn't okay it. Uh, like all hormonal 16-year-old boys, he has returned with a new outlook on life, and even believes that he may now be in love with one of the women he met there. <laughs> you have a lot to learn, my boy. <laughs> you have a lot to learn. I'm afraid the ladies on the on the sex island, they don't love you, son. They don't love you. Don't fall in love with the ladies on the sex island, for they will drag you you'll drag your boat towards the rocks. They are the evil harpies. Do not <laughs> do not get distracted by their song, my boy. You are but sixteen and have much to learn about the world. The ladies of the sex island, they are not to be loved. Well, not like that, anyway. Ma ha 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 ha. Anyway, did anything else happen? I was really nervous at first, but the other men did everything to help me and put my mind at rest. Right, okay. They've become like a family to me. You're only there for a couple of days! Every guest was allowed to choose two girls who they would spend the entire vacation with. Uh, one of my girls was called Andrea, and I fell in love with her. I want her to be my girlfriend. She treats me so well. Oh, dear. Oh, you, you do have much to learn, my boy. Much to learn. I want to marry her. And she says she wants to come to live with me in the United States. I bet she does, because she's probably being held captive on there. There's a real dark side to this sex island, isn't there? Uh, I've kept her number, and I hope to see her again. Best of luck, mate. Uh, Yes, we won't hold our breath for updates on this particular love story. Oh, dear. Uh, Well, look, let's... um, Look, this is a new Prolix tune. It's out yesterday, maybe, I think, or at the beginning of the week. It's called Drop Bombs. Uh, It's on Blackout best things are these days and it is an almighty shoe thrower
Oh, sweet baby Jesus, if that isn't an absolute Yeezy yeeter. Yeah, you're right, it's only a matter of time until they have a sex robot island. That seems more reasonable in a way, doesn't it? If you've come here from Facebook and you're listening on the YouTube, don't forget to smash that subscribe button to get notified when I go live every motherfucking morning. Remember, of course, you can get Coffee and Memes as a podcast. Just go to your podcast app of choice, search for Coffee and Memes, and fulfil your childhood dreams. Ooh, yeah. Right, okay, on to the important news. Is Elon Musk covering up the existence of aliens? UFOs spotted behind SpaceX craft. Lobsters. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, Elon Musk knows a lot about tunnels, spaceships, and the grave threat of artificial intelligence. Uh, Jasper Hamill of the Metro, my arch nemesis, reports, 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 reports. Uh, but does he know about the existence of aliens? He could do. Scientists say that Elon, e- Elon Musk could could know something about some stuff. Uh, sadly, we can't answer this question, and the latest claims from UFO hunters are unlikely to help us do so either. A famous YouTube channel, Secure Team 10 and Third Phase of Moon, have both uploaded videos showing a mysterious craft appearing behind the SpaceX Dragon that's on its way to the International Space Station. I wonder what Elon Musk has to say about this. Uh, It's been suggested that the craft is either alien in origin or perhaps a top secret and possibly non-existent spy plane called the TR-3B. I think that's a Roland synthesizer, isn't it? Get your act together. Sorry. Uh, Which is also known as the Black Triangle. Right, okay. That's what the lads at the sauna call my... Yeah, any, look, anyway. Um, although this craft has never actually been officially confirmed or observed, 
by by unequivocally reliable sources, it has achieved legendary status amongst conspiracy theorists. Yeah, it could be fucking anything, couldn't it? Let's be honest here, boys and girls. It could be absolutely anything. Why not? Good, good. Uh, Jasper Hamill again, only receiving 200 shares on this article. Poor Jasper Hamill. He doesn't get a lot of love, does he? I mean, I, feel, I almost feel bad about being mean to him. Um, could this be the infamous TR-3B up in space, uh, visiting up close? Ask one narrator of the third phase of Moon video. This is stunning footage. This thing is huge. Notice the portal underneath. It definitely matches the characteristics of the TR-3B, the plane that apparently doesn't exist. It's going to be hard to suppress this. Um, unfortunately, an explanation uh, has now been offered for the sighting. Look into it. Uh, on social media, an alien debunking account called UFO of Interest said the SpaceX video probably showed uh, a city on Earth uh, appearing behind the spacecraft. Right, uh, yeah, that does look sort of similar, I guess. It's not as fun, though, is it? Fucking just UFO of interest.org Twitter account. It seemed like a bunch of killjoy twats to me. Elon Musk uh, was at the heart of another bizarre alien claim earlier this week. A world-famous UFO spotter suggested that he secretly sent a weird robotic creature to Mars <laughs> on a mission to investigate NASA's Red Planet Rover. Right, okay. Um, is it just me, or have I found a mini, mini alien robot wandering around the Mars Curiosity rover? Asked Scott C. Waring. Sorry, mate, it's just you. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even 100% sure that Elon Musk is human. I think he could be a cyborg. He could have come out of the same factory as Zuckerberg and Bezos and the royal family. I think they could all be... They could. I think they could be sex robots that have basically gone against their programming... Um, they're men are just being out there slinging dick for the lonely lasses of the world, but they've they've gone out and basically they well, it's up for debate whether or not you consider they're using their powers for evil or for good. Um, by rather than you know satisfying the every whim of rich lonely lasses, uh, they've gone out and built large tech companies. I do think that maybe that's how the robots will take over the world. It won't be like it won't be a sort of Terminator Two style, you know, war. Where we're all out shooting each other with laser guns and hiding underground and all that sort of malarkey. Basically, the sex robots will take over by starting tech companies and then um, getting everyone to work, getting all the humans to work in Amazon factories and then bear spray them all like they did last week or whatever. Hey, I don't know. I'm just out here playing tunes, talking bollocks. You know, I, I'm just, you know, out here at the whim of Wesley Snips. He's, he's controlling me up there, not, not anyone else. That and old. Um, uh, Big Bop of the Whopper there, and maybe a little bit of Baba Vanga. Anyway, look, let's get on to a few more of these shoe throwers. Got this um, uh, Conduct remix of Blue Mar 10, a track called Delirium. Really nice bit of gear, actually. Really, really very nice. Be quiet. Come on. Get me over. Sam in the chat. What does the ugly fella from Blink 182 say about it? Yeah, that's what we know. We want to know what Tom DeLong's on about it. That guy's far out.
that's a Conduct remix of Delirium by Blue Mar 10. It's nice. I'm into it. I am into it. Mmm. Man who volunteered for world's first head transplant reveals new wife a miracle son. How about that? Um, a man who volunteered to have a full head transplant in the name of science has revealed that he is now married with a miracle son. Uh, after moving to start a li- new life in the USA. Come on. There it is. That's the American dream, right? That is the American dream right there. Um, Valerie... Uh, Valery uh, Spiridonov, who is a 33-year-old, uh, was completely prepared to be fully decapitated in an attempt to surgically attach his head to another body. Uh, uh, Spiridonov suffers from a degenerative form of spinal muscular atrophy uh, called uh, Verdig Hoffman disease. I'll tell you what, yeah. Right, I know he's got married, yeah, and his missus is outrageously hot outrageously hot them incels yeah them incel boys the involuntary celibacy lot who are just so useless they can't get laid they need to have a fucking word with them i mean they need to have a word with themselves anyway but they need to have a fucking word this dude yeah this dude's got verdig hoffman disease and he is slinging dick like like he's got three hands like he he he's a fucking hero like seriously you've got no excuse if you're you know a, a normal-looking, able-bodied man. You just need to... Get your act together. Uh, anyway, uh, his surgery was to be performed by a controversial doctor, Sergio Dr. Frankenstein Canavero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's um, he's a bit of fun, this uh, Sergio, Dr. Sergio. He's the guy who's like, yes, yeah, so I think we're going to be able to do the head transplants. All we have to do is work out how to do head transplants. Uh, well, that is the attitude, isn't it? I guess. Um... It never went ahead, however, and Canavero is now working in China, where he, where he claimed to have a surgery, uh, where he claims to have carried out the surgery on a corpse. Yeah, cutting off a dead body's head and putting it onto another dead body is, uh, yeah, that's got his own. So, I mean, people have probably done that before, and um, yeah, that carries with it sort of its own set of. Um, uh, you're certainly frowned upon. Let's 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 put it that way. I mean, anyone could do I could probably do that under the right circumstances. But you can't prove that it's worked, can you? If you just take a dead body's head, put it on a different body, stitch it back up, go, look, see, it works. Like, well, are you okay? Do you, are you, do you need to talk to somebody? Because we can, we can, there's help is available. We can get you, we can get you the help that you need. Sergio, Sergio, are you all right? Come on. That's all right. Come here. Come here, love. Come on. You're all right. Look, well. We'll work it out, okay? Oh, fuck. He's lost his mind. Uh, despite that, uh, uh, Spirindendorf uh, has now managed to relocate to Florida, along with his wife, Anastasia Panfilova, uh, with whom he has a son uh, that was born six weeks ago. Uh, he's also studying a course in computer analysis at the University of Florida. Man, he is living his best life, no doubt. Uh, there remains a degree of doubt about his relationship, um, as the pair have not been pictured together. Ah, but she has spoken about enjoying a relationship with a man in a wheelchair on social media. Uh, okay. Oh, dear. Um, hmm, that totally clears that up beyond doubt, then. Um, she wrote, Such people are much deeper, feeling, faithful, kind-hearted, and also they're usually very smart. Isn't that the main thing? Yeah. Uh, for his part, Valerie has... Uh, uh, Valeri has previously said... We lived in the same city and often met in professional settings and soon realised that we felt really good together. She has several degrees. We got married a little over a year ago in Moscow. Lovely stuff. Yeah, again, no, no pictures of them together. But I do feel he should definitely still be an inspiration. Um, that much seems plausible enough. Uh, Pane Filova has a master's degree in chemical technology, has previously worked in Italy. As for the pioneering work of Dr. Frankenstein... Um, he's previously spoken to Russian media about how he wants the uh, he wants the doctor Canavero to come clean about what he's now doing in China. What? Oh, matey um, Valeri says he wants uh, the doctor Frankenstein to come clean about what he's doing in China. The, it, it, I would definitely have concerns about what old um, what's his name, Doctor Doctor Sergio. Um, come on, where's he gone? Oh no, 
Yeah, Doctor, what do, what Doctor Sergio is doing in his wacky lab in China, splicing different bits of people together. He's gone mad. He's like the bloody guy in Human Centipede. He's lost it. He, he's a danger. He needs stopping. We should get a change.org petition together. Um, oh, well, bless this guy. He's living his best life. He's got a kid now. Uh, there's a picture of him with the kid, so that's a start. Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, look, judge not lest they be judged to themselves, but I do think this doctor guy does. I think it's worth keeping tabs on him. Um, you know, I, I certainly I have my concerns. Right, look, listen, ladies, gents, sisters, brothers, and others, let's, um, to play us out, Seba. Uh, with uh, this little number called She Looks Real. <laughs> Probably about sex robots. And uh, tomorrow will be the Christmas special. Cy Twitty of Trickstar Radio fame will be joining me. My dear girlfriend Hayley will be joining as well. Going to try and do a bit of a 2018 roundup. 
also got a jump up remix of All I Want for Christmas is You, so that's that's worth tuning in for that. I'm saying there's Spore did a Christmas song. That's going to be worth digging out. It's also a Chris Lorenzo uh, bloody baseline house version of Jingle Bells. That's that's worth it. If you if you do have any a, a, appalling Christmas remixes, please send them my way. Join the uh, Lobster Crew group uh, on Facebook. There's a link in the YouTube description and send them over, or just email them to will at threshold.fm. Just email me anything you like. It's fine. Just stay in touch. So look, this just leaves us time to shout out the VIP list. This is a list of powerful motherfuckers that are helping keep Coffee and Memes going. Helping to keep me do this every day. Helping to keep Threshold.fm alive. By supporting the show on Patreon. By supporting for $10 a month or more. You wonderful, wonderful humans. Uh, if you want your name on this list, all you got to do is go over to our Patreon page and become one of the members of the, I think it's the Horns crew, or the Whistles crew. You'll get your name read out at the end of every show. It's Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Moss and Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, John Potter, Cole, Mur- Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, uh, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbart, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Heischelback, John Finnison, the BDR crew, and Peter Blatchford. Thank you very, very much, and thank you again to everyone that's supporting for less than $10 on Patreon. You're all wonderful people. Thank you to people who've been sending messages. I've got a lot of messages recently from people saying, love the show. Um, we need to get more people to listen to it. Why aren't more people listening? Um, well, I'm pleased with the numbers that we've got already, and they, they do seem to be going up. Um, but if you feel that way, please uh, just just share the live stream, share the podcast, or yeah, share the um, share the YouTube link each day, or share a link to Threshold, and we can grow this crazy lobster community uh, all the way to the stars um so look thank you very much for listening also tonight at 8 p.m uh we're playing gold top radio again which is crock and bide playing two hours of absolutely monstrous music it was very popular on monday so we're replaying it on the wednesday that's at 8 p.m on threshold.fm and uh look i love you all dearly uh from me and wesley snips just go out you know do some good be nice to people you know, try and help others, try and, you know, help old ladies across the road, help a brother and a sister out, be decent, just climb up the competence hierarchy and, you know, aim yourself at the highest possible good. Something like that. Oh, and also tickets are selling for on the 15th of January. Um, I'm doing a live event at the Hoxton Bar and Kitchen in London uh, called Untangling Mental Health in Music. And it looks like for that first one will be me scientific potentially benverse potentially mampy um i just have to get people locked in but other names for the following months we've got tim exile eddie temple morris dylan king cannibal uh killer uh, killer keller uh matt Cantor from the freestylers who is now a psychotherapist and uh it's going to be great i think it's going to be really really good professor green is also doing a thing the following night I think I'm, well, maybe I'll see if I can strong arm him into coming on mine. You never know your luck. 
I mean, he's a bit, he's a big celebrity these days. He's come a long way since he done did that rap battle with Stegger the Dump and won all that MySpace cash. He's come a long way since then. God bless him. Um, but yeah, otherwise, look, I love you all dearly. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 for the Coffee and Memes Christmas special. God bless.